that time of year again, the time where I crawl out of my cave and go explore the world, you know, the great beyond. And by great beyond, I mean Boston, Massachusetts. It's not really beyond, it's less than a two hour drive from me, but it is pretty great. As you can plainly see, this is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, otherwise known as MIT, otherwise known as the Institute from Fallout. An honor to be here at my my stomping grounds. This is my home. I mean, my last name's smart for a reason, folks. It's not rocket science. But here at MIT, that's exactly what it is. Look that way. See that? That's Boston. Boston's a city. And what does this city have in it besides clam chowder, cheers, and some of the worst drivers in the country? None other than PAX East, the annual gaming convention held every spring at the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center. And it just so happens to be the 20th anniversary of PAX, meaning this is the 20th PAX East. here at PAX East, Boston, Massachusetts. When I went to Unplugged, it's, I only been to Philly like one time, but Boston, I've been here plenty of times. I practically know the city like the back of my head. Very excited to be here. This is a lot bigger, a lot bigger of a convention than Unplugged was. A lot of cool cosplays here. I already see a dude down there dressed as Master Chief. A lot of cool games I'm seeing, tournaments. A lot of developers I recognize instantly. I am more into video games than tabletop games, I will admit, but here, it's more familiar ground, more familiar city. I'm looking to have a good time. We're just here to have fun. We're here to have a pretty great time. I'm here with Big Boss. How's it going? How's the war effort? Mother base is doing pretty good. We're expanding. I think we got another FOB getting set up. So things are looking up. That's good to hear. Well, what about Didi? It's doing extremely well. It's good to meet the man who sold the world. You're a legend. Keep doing what you do. Hello. How are you? Hello. Two Sephiroths. See. How did that happen? What did I miss? You have very big swords. <laughs> I tried to make it as accurate as possible. Rightly so. His is 3D printed, but mine's made of balsa wood, so very different blades. They both look very realistic regardless, which is very cool. You guys enjoying the convention? Oh, yes. Everyone's super friendly. It's part of why I love the con scene so much, because everyone's into the same thing. Yeah. Cheers, Mike. Cheers. I figured instead of just talking to random people, I would also try and get the scoop on some of the latest games showcased at the convention. I saw a game called Fretless and thought, oh, that seems pretty cool, let me talk to one of the devs. So I spoke with Connor, and the rest is history. Tell me about Fretless, this is a pretty cool looking game. That's already a good sign. Uh, Fretless is a guitar PG, and basically instead of swords and shields, you use guitars and riffs. Basically every time we could incorporate music in any way that we could, uh, it kind of helped us out and helps build the theme in the world. So instead of adding like armor and helmets and stuff like that, you're adding strings and capos. Playing the demo, it was really cool being able to like hear the battle music change like with your attacks and their attacks. Music is a really like fluid way of presenting things. I, I really appreciate that. We try to make it not like you're just playing a wave file and you're like, meh, meh, like different stuff. So Jeff, who's not around right now, but he's our music guy. There's four of us on the team at Ritual Studios. And he basically has learned a way to have this backing track and the, the skills themselves kind of all infusing together. The enemies and everything sounds good no matter what order. And that's a really hard challenge in the beginning. Yeah, I can definitely tell this is like one of the games where like the soundtrack is going to not only be integral, but I'm just going to love it. Like from start to finish, the pixel art, the animation. Uh, this is just- I know how to do pixel art. <laughs> So it's, it's been a long journey. This seems like a really just cool, unique game. I'm looking forward to the full release. I really appreciate that, Cole. It's, it's like really nice to hear that, and it's crazy because I'm like sitting in my like home, like and just like drawing this, and like the dog in there is my dog, the daughter running around, like that's my daughter, and like my wife's in there, and like wow. it's like all these things that I have in my life, and I've just been staring at it a billion times. It's cool to see why I got into games being experienced by other people. Like, oh, that's fun. So I really appreciate it, Cole. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for making a great game. Yeah, well, 
Thank you for playing it. Thank you for being an awesome person. Well, thank you for being an awesome YouTuber. Justin, thank you for being a great cameraman. After meeting some fellow company members and sampling the finest potato shreds brought to you by Idahoan, we came across something unexpected. No way. Vino. 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 For the uninitiated, Vino is a sport of champions. It is a game that requires precision, requires elegance, and grace. You flick the ball, it goes in the net. That's a Bino. It's easy to learn, but difficult to master. And I've played some mean sons of bitches on this Bino pitch, like my friend Justin here. Here you can see I'm putting up a good fight, but as you'll soon witness, I succumb to my folly. God damn it! I hate you! Sauce. Heat. Walk. Hub. Hub. Hey, you want another game interview? Sure thing. Here's a PS1 style game called Heartworm, made by one man and one man only. Heartworm, it's a survival horror inspired game that I'm making, um, inspired by the classics. Resident Evil. Silent Hill, yep. I'm trying to kind of put my own twist on it, but also stay faithful to the way these games used to play, I guess. I like those old like tank controls that are like kind of clunky to get used to at first. The PS1 style graphics. The gameplay just looks great. Thank you. It's like Resident Evil and Silent Hill had a baby, and then having the camera as a weapon adds this like fatal frame element to it, which I like very much. What could you tell me what your like thought process was behind some of the narrative elements? A lot of it is a culmination of things that I like and also things that I have experienced in my life. The house in the beginning of the game is based on an abandoned house that I used to explore um, oh, nice. and take photos of uh, like way back in the day and then I just kind of like developed a story around it. This girl she's trying to come to terms with accepting the deaths of those around her kind of this like surreal way by entering into this other world through this house. You know I, I want it to be kind of serious in some ways so like that's where I'm leaning more towards Silent Hill and less like you know, can't be Resident Evil. You gotta like strike a fine balance. Yeah, uh, like, right, and not take it too seriously. I like when people are able to just incorporate their own memories into the game. Design areas or characters based on like their experiences, people they've met, places they've been. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm looking forward to this game. Thank you, thank you so much. Keep an eye out, wishlist it on Steam, you know, do all that stuff, it's super helpful, and just I appreciate you taking the time to take a look at it, yeah. That is a big hammer. Yes. How are you guys enjoying the convention so far? It's lovely. It's nice, I'm sweaty, but I mean, still having fun. <laughs> I'm sweaty too, man. It may not look like it, but I am heavily perspirating under my beanie right now. I love that. I love that you got the contact lens. Oh, thank you so much. That's incredible. And you, Dante, from the critically acclaimed Devil May Cry series. Hell yeah. More guns equals more fun, baby. Love this sword, too. That's friggin' awesome! I promote as well. <laughs> Speaking of Devil May Cry, I was fortunate enough to talk with one of the series' biggest fans, a Twitch streamer a lot of you may recognize. How's it going, man? What is this? A donut. I'm doing a video for PAX East, and I figured since you're here, this would be an incredible highlight. It's nice to finally meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. I'm Cole, by the way. Hi, Mr. Cole. I'm Vinny. How are you liking the convention so far? Well, it's nice. That's that's great. I've been watching your stuff for a long time. Discovered you through all the Mario corruption streams. Kind of just like downward spiraled into this rabbit hole. I just want to let you know you're a funny guy. He thinks you're a funny guy too. He's my friend. I brought my 3DS with me. Yes. You think we can get a photo on my 3DS camera? Yeah. Thank you. What kind of stratagem is that? Oh no. <laughs> Outward 2. I was not expecting a sequel to this, but I'm pleasantly surprised. I played a little bit of the first one. What can you tell me about this one? So we are hoping to uh, improve the game on four main areas. The first one is better combat. There were uh, a lot of valid criticism about how the game was kind of clunky, and uh, that came from a lot of uh, budgetary constraints, but we are reinvesting a lot of the money from uh, the revenue of the first one. The second aspect is better narration. I believe that Outward One had a very good story, 
but didn't have the best tools to deliver that story. It was just text boxes and only partial voiceover. This time around, we will have like longer quest lines with branching scenarios. We'll have cut scenes, fully voiced over. So we're really trying to improve our game there. Third aspect is to make a world that feels more alive. In Outward One, there were changes of season, but they were kind of random occurrence every two weeks. Right. Now we have eight different months and like persistent seasons going around. So it's a yearly calendar really changing the experience. Oh, the fourth. first aspect is better character creation. Character creation in Outward One was very basic. Uh, once again, budgetary constraints. Here we could do something much more um, modern. And uh, it's not just your uh, physical appearance. There's going to be some traits that you can choose from that will affect your stats and some, uh, some options and some quests as well. This game's obviously a huge improvement over the first one. Outward was fun because tooling around, having fun, slaying monsters and all that stuff. And it is good that, like you said, the budgetary constraints, it's good that you're able to capitalize on that yep. more and make the game more fun, more memorable. Is it still two-player only? Yes. And that's actually important to me. We're trying to create a certain mood, uh, a feeling of uneasiness, of danger. If you're playing with a bunch of your friends, you will never have that feeling. I'm looking forward to see what you guys put out. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And now it's all over. Cool, there's no line for... Oh. There's no... Oh, God damn it. Oh, wait, yeah, there's no one here. There's absolutely...